Barcelona has defeated Getafe 1-0 with a goal coming from Pedri. Now, I want to get the worst possible like things out the way because I do have a lot of things to say and to take off my chest because it was not a good a good game. I'm going to be making multiple key points within this video, but again, I want to make the most negative key point right now before we do get into the positive stuff. So, point number 1, and I want to say this, Barcelona never showed up in this win at all. There was no fast passes, they were not clinical, they were not focused enough, they never took advantage of any of the spaces in, in in order to attack, Barcelona were slow against Hetafe. Yes, Barcelona have won three points, but we were slow. It was very alarming. They had a horrible game. Now, I have nothing really good to say about Barcelona's collective performance. There were some bright things when it comes to like individual performances, but overall, collectively, Barcelona did not play the good game. Like ever since Barcelona were winning 1-0 with Pedri's goal, there was no urgency to improve. And that has been one of the biggest critiques, in my opinion, for FC Barcelona is just because you're winning 1-0 or just because you're winning 2-1 or winning by one goal in general, you should not be thinking that the game is already over and that you should be winning by the time this game is over. Like, that's not going to happen. Like, if you are too relaxed, if you're not focused at all, the opposition is going to realize that and they're going to gain their confidence and they're going to be able to come back and score a goal and take away points from you, potentially. I have always said that Barcelona need to be a team that puts the games away before the second half even starts. We should have been winning 2-0, 3-0, 4-0 before the second half. But this constant problem that we continue to get into cannot get away from this team at all. Whatever we saw with, between Barcelona and Hetafe is very similar to what we saw with Man City versus Tottenham yesterday. Very similar to what Pep Guardiola did with Man City. He did say this after the match was over, that there was no desire, there was no fire, there was no energy. Man City were extremely slow. Yes, he understood that Man City won, but he believed that Man City are not going to be as lucky as they were against Tottenham and winning these three points in the next game. They think that luck will eventually run out if they continue to play with no desire, no fire, no energy, no nothing. And the same thing could be said with FC Barcelona. Like, like again, we won the three points. Yes, it's very important that we won this, but at the end of the day, if we continue with this type of intensity and fire and energy, we're not going to be winning those games like against Girona or Cadiz. And this is how we're going to end up losing La Liga. We have to understand that. I have no idea why these players cannot see that, but we can. Like us, the audience, the fan base, the people who support this channel, why can we see this, but the players and the coaching staff cannot? And what pisses me off even more is the fact that this Barcelona on team were playing like this and at the Camp Nou in front of their own fans. Like, how disrespectful is that? And you may say, but Kevin, no. But the only, only the big teams count. We only want to see Barcelona beat the, the cities, the Bayerns, the Real Madrids. Look, if you get a D and an F constantly in your homework, within your classes, but then you end up getting an A plus in your final exam, you're still going to fail that class. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you need to do well in your small homeworks. In other words, Getafe, Girona, Espanol. Again, do amazing and also get an A plus in the final exam. In other words, Real Madrid, Man City, Bayern Munich, Atletico Madrid, and much more. And then we look at the attacking activity over here, right? If you guys do not know what if you guys do not know what this graph is, it's basically like the attacking momentum that a team had. Barcelona is the green, and then Getafe is going to be the blue. Okay, this again, this is the attacking activity. The higher it is, it basically meant the higher chance they had to score a goal. Why on earth is Barcelona in the second half, right? Why are the bars so low? Why did Barcelona's attacking activity go even less? when it should have been the complete opposite. We should have had way more attacking activity in the second half, have way more urgency to score the 2-0 or the 3-0. And if anything, Hetafe grew in this game. Like, look how many blue bars they ended up getting in the second half. And I remember on the 92nd minute, and this pissed me off, like, so much, right? Like, I know I'm being a little petty right now, but it just, I have to say, I remember on the 92nd minute, Hetafe almost scored a header goal, go going through Busquets so easily, and then out of nowhere, when Ter Sehen saved that ball, again, because he is right now, our savior in order for us to get the three points. When Ter Stegen, as soon as he saved that ball, because it was again a miracle that Ter Stegen was able to get the ball after it has been headed by one of the Hetafe players, all of the Barcelona players started clapping like if it was a good thing. Like they're like, wow, good job. Wow, that was amazing. Wow, you, you saved us. Let's keep going, guys. Woo! Like that would have pissed off so many other managers. Like if this was Pep or Klopp, or I think even Xavi Hernandez was mad after that. Like if you give out a chance that easy, and especially in the dying few minutes of the match, knowing that if one that one goal was going to ruin the whole thing if any of those coaches saw that they would have been so pissed like you should not be clapping after that you should be frustrated and questioning why on earth did that even happen in the first place not clapping and saying good job to stand wow you're doing amazing buddy let's keep going guys we got this like that's just like i hate that type of attitude so that is basically the general review of this whole thing about barcelona and hetafe it's just it was a horrible horrible game and i want to go into four different key points regarding rafinha 
Valde, Ansu Fati, Tristehen, Gavi, and Pedri, right? So let's go with point number one, which will be Rafinha and Dembele. There is no reason for Xavi, to, for Xavi Hernandez to ever put Rafinha on the right side and having Dembele on the left. Dembele just looks inefficient. I think that Dembele had a better game than Rafinha, but even with Dembele being on the left, it, he wasn't as efficient like if he was the Dembele on the right side. We're not getting the most out of the front three when we have those two players in those two positions. And I know why. Dembele and Rafinha do demand a certain environment within the pitch. For example, Rafinha is a player that prefers to be very compact with his other teammates, to be very close, to organize, to do one-twos, and to go up the pitch together. That is the type of player Rafinha is. Dembele, on the other hand, is different. He likes to be very isolated on the right wing and by himself in order for him to receive the ball, take on about one to two players. He does not really care about being very close and compact with his teammates at all, right? Two very different types of ways they see football regarding Dembele and Rafinha. But because of this game and what Xavi did, because Xavi placed Dembele on the left side, he was compact with his teammates and Rafinha was isolated on the right side, which is why both of them were not really comfortable in those sides and they demanded a different type of environment and a different way of playing, a different attacking situation. So this is the reason why by the time we got into the 29th minute, we saw Dembele and Rafinha switch roles and switch positions. And so these are the type of problems that I think that we will only encounter when we are in the league matches. Like for example, we're facing against those mid to low level clubs. We will be seeing like Rafinha and Dembele switch, maybe like try out Dembele on the left one day, Rafinha on the right one day, and then maybe switch them later down the game. We're, go we're going to be seeing problems like this, but I think that when we face those tougher teams, like against Sociedad or Real Madrid, or maybe even the in the Europa League, when we face Manchester United, we're probably going to be going with a four-man midfield, and we're not even going to be having this conversation about whether Rafinha should be on the left or on the right side. We're probably going to be seeing like Pedri on the left with Dembele and Lewandowski in the front three with Pedri. So this is a problem that should be fixed. Going on to point number two, and that is Balde and Asufati. I think that Balde and Asufati were really trying hard to build with one another. Asufati was playing as the number nine in this game. He got in good positions, but he never really received a lot of balls in order for him to like score goals. But sometimes even when he did receive the ball and the cross was successful, he could not really control it well, which was very underwhelming, I would say. Now, I did not expect Ansu Fati to perform like Lewandowski and be world class as a number nine, but I felt like he could have done better. Do I think that he played bad also? I don't think so. He just played okay, but we just needed more in my opinion. Ansu Fati's main and best partner was Alejandro Balde, as always. I have always said, and I said this in a few videos ago, that this duo needs to be built. I think that Ansu and Balde can give so much to Chavis Barcelona because they have great understanding. Even under the building phase, Ansu Fati and Balde are very, very dangerous because they're able to work, right? And work with pace. And that can be a real dangerous option for Xavi Hernandez. Like the fact that we saw Alejandro Balde give these very sharp and fast crosses to Ansu, it was amazing to see. Now, this duo did not last long enough because by the time we got into the second half, Jordi Alba did come in and came in for Alejandro Balde. But hopefully in the future, we get to see more of Balde and Ansu Fati to continue to build their chemistry. Let's move on towards point number three, which will be Ter Stehen, right? Ter Stehen was a wall. I do think that he is the best goalkeeper in the world at the moment. He made three big saves in the first half that could have made it 1-1 or maybe even 2-1, but Ter Stehen was always there to go on 1v1s with one of the players of Hetafe. I do think, like I've said, he is probably the best goalkeeper in the world. He's in a very similar form to what we saw back in 2018 and 2019. And let me tell you, if Barcelona finish this league season with the most clean sheets, it will be because of Ter Stehen. Like, yes, let's thank our defense, right? That does have Araujo, Christensen, Kunde for being so well, right? Let's thank this defense when Barcelona concede less than how much they used to. But let's also thank Ter Stehen for giving us many clean sheets. And now lastly, let's talk about point number four, which will be Pedri and Gavi. Xavi Hernandez does and has always wanted to place Pedri and Gavi in positions where they can score or provide an assist. And Xavi is doing that and very successfully. Gavi, remember, he scored a goal and provided two assists against Real Madrid. Pedri also scored a goal against Real Madrid. Pedri now has scored a goal against Getafe. And we're going to continue to see this type of momentum and rhythm from these two interiors. That has, again, been Xavi's main objective. I think that that is just also Xavi's modern way of thinking about football is he believes that in modern football, the midfielders should be having at the very least, right? At the very least, 15 goal contributions per season. Pedri and Gavi can be going down that path. And Xavi Hernandez is more than comfortable to say that Pedri and Gavi can do that because these two interiors, they have the skill set in order to do so. They know how to take shots. They know how to find that assist. And they're very smart in running into space inside the box. That is the reason why Barcelona were able to find that first goal is because Pedri was so smart in waiting in the box, timing his run, waiting for Rafinha to make that cross. And with Rafinha making that beautiful cross, again, 
and that is the reason why Barcelona were able to score that perfect, perfect goal. And I'm very interested. I'm very eager to know how Pedri and Gavi are going to be performing against Manchester United. That's going to be a game where it is going to be a knockout game. We're going to have to score goals. We cannot just rely on Lewandowski. And can Gavi and Pedri continue to prosper and score more goals through this process? And hopefully they can do that against Manchester United, which is going to be extremely tough because we saw how Man U were playing against Arsenal. They play amazing, amazing and dangerous football. And I've already seen one of the weaknesses of Man United. They still have a lot to work on when it comes to one of the midfielders running into the box and they have to defend a cross. Barcelona can definitely take advantage of that by making Alejandro Balde or maybe even Jordi Alba making those crosses or Dembele or Rafinha, whoever, and then having Pedri and Gavi running into those spaces inside the box and score the goal against Manchester United. But that's going to be like a whole other different conversation, a whole other different video that I would love to talk about maybe later down these next two weeks. But that is basically it right. So that will be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.